Quantum Big with Steve Bartilla. Brought to you by... Today, we're going to talk about something a little bit different here, and that is learning about whitetails simply by watching other animals. You want to know how, how whitetails utilize topography? Go to a cattle yard. <laughs> Go somewhere where there's some topography and watch the cows, the goats, the horses. They're going to tell you how animals like to use topography. Um, same with bedding. Where are the cows bedding today? When are they bedding down? When are they moving? The more we actually study farm animals <laughs> out in the obviously the larger in fenced areas the better but out in their pastures the more we can predict how those animals like to walk through terrain follow the cow trails the cow paths they're going to tell you then go ahead and when are they going to be bedded down most when are they going to be most active the farm, the cattle are going to tell you when the cattle are most active. Generally speaking, now, of course, human pressure plays a role in all this. I'm talking about just natural movement. Okay, When those cows are moving, when those goats are moving, when those sheep and horses are moving all around out in the pasture, you might want to go out in the woods. Because guess what? They're all ruminants. They're all from essentially the same grouping of them, and they tend to share the same ways they want to travel, when they want to be active, when they don't want to be active, where are the spots that they like to bed down. All of that can, not 100% accurately, but very darn close, can be learned simply by studying the animals out in the barnyards. And then more and more of us that manage ground for whitetails have learned that managing our predator populations are good too. I'll tell you what, when you're starting out trapping, if you're going to start out with coyotes, you're starting at the hard end of things. So you tend to fall on your face a whole bunch. Hmm, want to know where to make a scent post? Why don't you take your dog out next time you're running around out in the field? Because that dog's going to tell you. <laughs> That dog is going to come up to the most obvious spot and it is going to urinate. You want to know the areas of that field that these animals are going to check. Let the dog run loose out there for a little bit. Observe your dogs running around in the, and you have a huge, huge advantage right out of the gate when it comes to coyote and fox trapping. Wolf trapping for the north. Again, no, they are not the exact same animals but they tend to share the same tendencies. They tend to hunt generally the same ways. They tend to travel the same ways. They sure tend to mark the same spots. Open your eyes to <clears throat> what is around you. Pay attention to what other animals are doing. Honestly, it's gonna help you quite a bit in the, in the deer world and the trapping world because the more you understand how these animals travel, when they're active, when they're the least active, where they tend to bed, obviously these are all huge advantages for us as hunters and managers. Final Thoughts, brought to you by Huntworth. To really take your game up another notch, look to where most people don't, and that is study those farm animals. Those farm animals will teach you how deer like to use topography, when they're most active, where they generally like to, the types of settings they generally like to bed in. Okay, then for trapping, look to your dog. Have your dog run around out in the area that you're gonna be trapping and with the spots that that dog stops to pee, well, you know what, those aren't bad spots for, potential spots for scent posts. If you can, bring a female and a male dog along, you'll be able to see how females mark their spots versus males, and you can take advantage of all that stuff simply by always, always being a student of the outdoors. The more we're a student of the outdoors, the more we learn and the better off we are.